we have to mention this. This is pretty stunning, isn't it? Regarding Kanye and Adidas, man. I think this is really, really interesting to see how this is playing out because you kind of get the feeling the Adidas executives are feeling a little bit regretful about pulling the trigger on Kanye, um, you know, on his flipping I love Hitler stances and all this other anti-Semitic stuff he was saying when he was going crazy um, a few months or what back or whatnot, especially now that the numbers have kind of been laid bare. So this is courtesy of Reuters. It says Adidas boss eyes turn around after Kanye West split. Um, it says here, Adidas will slash its 2022 dividend, the sportsmaker said in January in Wednesday, after warning a split with the artist formerly known as Kanye West could push it to its first annual loss in three decades this year. Chief Executive Bjorn Golden, speaking to investors for the first time since taking over the reins in January the 1st, pledged to build a Bru pledged to rebuild the Bruce brand after dealing with a fallout from ending Adidas' partnership with West, who now goes by Ye, which yielded the lucrative Yeezy sneaker line. Adidas has not said how much the Yeezy brand has made since its first deal with Ye at the end of 2023, but analysts estimate it accounted for as much as 7% of total sales in its best years. Imagine, it only started in 2003, 2013, sorry, and it was nearly getting to, and I guess if he would have continued on, it probably would have accounted for 10% of Adidas's overall sales. And to consider Adidas do more stuff than just originals, they've got performance gear, they've got kids line, they've got jerseys, um, many other things I'm sure, even stuff like bottles and stuff that they kind of license and whatnot, 10% was all Yeezy, insane. The company needs to refocus on its core business and faces a transition year before returning to profit in 2024 and will return to its sports-based roots, Golden said. You will see us invest in more sports because that is our DNA of this company, he told reporters. The company will recommend a dividend of 0 0.7 euros per share down from 3.3 euros a share in 2021 at a May 11 annual general meeting, it said. Ada shares recovered from last year's loss uh, to trade up to 1.6 by um, 330 GMT. They have outperformed rivals Puma and Nike and since the start of this year in a sign that investors back Gordon. We believe the shares um, fail to discount the time it will take to rebuild the brand and margins. But one of the biggest quotes that come from this was as follows, right? These quotes that I kind of pulled from Twitter. One of them saying as follows. Adidas projects first annual loss in 30 years after split with Kanye West. The company projected to lose 738 million. 738 million for deciding that they couldn't you know weather the storm after Kanye went on Alex Jones donning the hardest Vetemon jacket you've ever seen and declaring that he loves Hitler and stuff they couldn't weather that storm they couldn't just let it pass and just think you know what let's just get the deal out of the way because I think that could have been done I think an easier solution would have been that hey however long the deal is put a statement out and say we're going to honor the deal we're going to get through this we're going to do it and then but when it's done it's done that would have been a better way to do it than to cut off, to risk, to, to lose 738 million to appease people in the moment who probably don't wear Adidas or care for the brand anyway. It's crazy, especially when you consider the amount of people who got fired off the back of this. Think of the people who got fired. The CEO obviously left, but think of every other person. person that, you know, there was a, I remember there was an article um, about factories closing because those factories were originally only set up to meet demand of how successful Yeezy was. Obviously, all that blame could be laid at Ye's feet himself because he was a person that went on that tire to say what he said. But still, they were willing to lose $738 million in order to appear somewhat quote-unquote woke. I wouldn't say it was woke because Kanye did say some crazy stuff, but I just think in that moment, there could have been a little bit more patience and just said, hey, here's our statement. We're going to cut ties with him once our contract is over, but we're going to honour this deal and see it through. And, call, and you can even spin it like we're going to do it for the fans. We don't want to disappoint our many legion of fans out there who are waiting for this product. That could have been a better way to do it than what they're going to do now, which is most likely burn everything. Imagine. So most likely after everything that's happened, you know, with this whole conversation around sustainability and global warming and stuff, they may be in a position where they might go on and just burn it all. They might go and just burn it all Burberry style. Imagine if that happens. New ADAS could be forced to literally burn up to $500 million worth of unsold apparel, which is hilarious because in one way, 
there was a time earlier on when some of the ALS executives were like boasting about owning the IP and essentially lauding it and holding it over Kanye's head that they've got the rights to his brand and he doesn't own them and they can do what they want. But the reality of it is they know the value of Yeezy is intrinsically tied to Kanye West. You know, he was a person that started the thing. He debuts in new colorways. He's always talking about it. He had full control. Like you can't then separate the man from the brand. It's just impossible. Or if you do, you're going to do it at a loss. They didn't want to do it at a loss, of course. So they'd rather burn it, burn it, than give it to the kids. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely incredible. And I absolutely hate it um, in all ways, shapes and form. And I it, honestly, my honest opinion of this is that I always initially thought at the time, it was a little bit hasty for them to cut the deal so quickly, especially even the way that Gap did it. Gap was super aggressive. They came out, they cancelled the deal with Kanye. I think the same day they took all the stuff off the shelves in the stores. Like they were going hard, Gap. They made a real good stance. But again, you know, a lot of it is Ye's fault because I think Ye really, really turned off people that work at these companies i think the guys that work at adidas the corporate guys hated him the gap dudes hated him you know he was there barking at them on videos talking to them in a disrespectful manner no no respect just like you know th these guys are all about their status and their reputation and how they looked at to have this guy this black man just standing there shouting at them making them feel like flipping peons it definitely didn't sit right with them so you know they made it known and they made sure to kind of get it out there and kind of go from there so it is what it is but Another thing I wanted to mention quickly was this picture that features Ye out recently with a few of his friends, right? Out and about in the town doing what it needs to do. And I find it interesting because number one, this isn't meant as a kind of harsh comment, just as the reality of life. Don't you find it interesting that Ye's wife, this lady called Bianca, who um, was um, also a employee at Yeezy, I think she was an architect or something. She's a trained architect actually legitimately. Don't you find that she looks very different in these real life pictures compared to the pictures that we saw online when it was first leaked that she was they were getting married but they were sharing pictures of her from her Instagram and all this sort of stuff and these cool photo shoots where she looked really hot and all that malarkey. She looks very different, like in motion, real life, than her Instagram account. And I guess it's just a standard thing of like society in general. People just look really, really different. But she looks very different. But then the other thing also you have to know is that Ye really does seem to have um I won't say no type, but he he does seem to be just like a, a lover, isn't it, in general? Like, there is no kind of tie, you could say, to the former, you know, hotties that he's kind of been with. He kind of just goes for people that he kind of is into, which I think is kind of cool in a weird way. There is no kind of, you know, he's not just got like a row of flipping mixed race baddies. They're all really different in terms of what they look like and whatnot. Maybe the other, maybe there's one of them that kind of people are saying looks a bit like, looks a bit like Kim. But if anything, I think Kim was maybe trying to look like her because, you know, she's legitimately mixed race and shit. But in general, I find that quite cool. And obviously, um, this loving that he seems to have now with these flipping um, combats is nice. I think, if I'm not mistaken, these are Balenciaga boots that he's now tucking into his boots themselves, which I think is a pretty hard look. And the other thing I wanted to mention was this. This guy here, this is that George, I think his name is George. Yeah, that's him, Guillermo Andrade from the brand 444. He definitely looks like he's been up a million hours. I wish I could see the picture of it to zoom in. But this is probably what fashion does to you. Running a fashion brand, running a store and whatnot. You know, he definitely looks like he's been up a million and million and seven hours. But yeah, Kanye's looking good there. I'm not too sure if that jacket is up and coming Yeezy. But I know the combat pants are definitely Balenciaga because I recognize the, you know, the placement of the pockets and stuff. They fit amazing. They're kind of high waist the cinch of the waist. And clearly Kanye has been, um, you know, he's been on his flipping keto diet. He's doing intermittent fasting because he looks flipping tight and taut as hell in that outfit fit and it fits him like an absolute glove and they look absolutely amazing and this lady for every reason looks like she's covered in so many bandages and stuff like stuff is putting it together but anyway regardless it looks cool and i loved it so big up him and then the other thing to also mention was this little um quote taken from the ceo of adidas the new one who said this in my opinion yeah he's maybe the most creative and i would say um a person that has never been in our industry so it's pretty clear that if this guy was around when Ye said what he said about Hitler and the Jews and just whatever else he said, he probably would have weathered the storm. He would have said, you know what, let's hold tight, let's sit tight and let's kind of weather the storm. Because what we've seen so far, look at Balenciaga, that crazy stuff with the BDSM bears happened and now life has gone back to normal. It's all been forgotten about. So I feel like they could have weathered the storm. If Alexander Wang still has a career, if Dolce Gabbana still have, you know, a brand that's thriving and they've got the, the Kylie Jenner flipping front in their campaigns, I think Ye could have survived if the brands weren't as, 
you know, nervous to kind of get rid of him, which makes me think as well, maybe it's just easier getting rid of someone like a Kanye, number one, being black, and number two, just being so, so easily unlikable. Like, he's just got a personality that you would imagine in real life must be so hard to get on with. So that probably makes it easier to kind of tell him to fuck off because you just don't like him as a person. And a lot of business you would imagine, especially at that kind of level, is on a sort of like relationship type of vibe you know if i vibe with you and you vibe with me we can kind of make it work and we can maybe excuse certain things or look by certain bad sales figures and whatnot because that relationship is there but if i don't feel the relationship is there and i don't feel the respect is there it's very hard to kind of do business so that may be the reason why it kind of went where it went in it that could be the reason why it went where it went but i find this really funny too this clip is hilarious because look what's happened in culture there was a time when being a yay fan people would think oh my god you're inspiring you're motivational you're driven you're creative um you've got these really big lofty dreams about yourself and what you're trying to do and whatnot but nowadays because of a few risque comments and crazy stuff said online and stuff yay's name has been completely muddied he's been completely stained and tainted now in culture to the point where when kids are dating if you say to somebody that you're a yay fan it immediately elicits this following reaction are there any type of philosophers that you would say you find yourself really akin to or that like really have influenced you uh kanye west steve jobs and my father did you just say kanye west <laughs> <laughs> he creates culture he creates conversation he changes people's minds but and he's anti he's some like and he's against well but like, but the th thing that how is like, yeah i know I'm i know sorry. i i know but as far as oh Kanye West, I'm sorry. As far, uh, the as, far as his comments on like the anti-Semitic stuff, stuff like the I like Hitler, I don't, I don't really. Sorry to interrupt. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this. Um... Again, I don't watch the show, but I've seen clips of it. But I don't think I've ever heard the narrator person type, whatever it may be, stopping the interview, like telling him to kind of go away. Like he didn't even get a chance to like. I would say articulate or defend himself. It was that bad. It's such like Kanye's name has become legitimately radioactive. It's toxic as hell. You can't be a Ye fan nowadays um, unapologetically. It's kind of like something you have to say in secret. But it's also funny that he didn't make any attempt to be like, hey, I love him as an artist. I like what he does, but I just don't agree with some of his views. I like the fact that he tried to kind of sit in the, yeah, he can say what he wants. This is Ye. Ye is like to say what he wants. But unfortunately, saying that, would damage your ability to <laughs> would damage your ability to flip in connect with certain people that's a that's ability oh man that's a, i love it i absolutely love it anyway continue what's it going here to talk about oh let's talk about this what people are saying here in chat um why did yeah uh yeah what does what do yes yeah, what did, mr no says wow did az just say ali that's found it easier to fire yeah because he's a black guy AD, az doesn't think nazi support isn't a big issue is this typically a black no i didn't say that you're putting words in my mouth mr no or i did not say that they found it easy just because he's black and not because of what he said i said those things could have played a role in it because we've seen other people from other cultures say crazy shit do crazy shit some of them go to prison for crazy shit and come out and stuff is definitely different from them than it is for other people in other cultures it just is what it is let's not try and kind of rewrite the narrative on this one it just simply is what it is um i still just think especially when you think about what happened look at alexander wang being a good example and again he's asian so it's not even a black thing it's just a societal thing i don't know maybe it's a black thing specific i don't know alexander wang was accused of and there was always a corroborating evidence that he was spiking guys drinks during fashion weeks and sexually assaulting them to the point where some people were going as far as saying that alexander wang may have purposely may have raped some of these guys allegedly i'm not saying he did or didn't but allegedly he may have raped these guys and alexander wang is a very popular very well-known fashion designer with a brand of his you know with his name on it he's very visible out there but for whatever reason, you know, the charges against him or the accusations kind of going to drop because I think he raised the resolution with the guys who accused him of what they accused him of. And again, I'm not going to blame the dudes for settling because, you know, sometimes going through the court system and all that sort of stuff and charging up trauma can be difficult. But they forgave him. But for some reason, the industry also forgave him and just turned a blind eye to it like it didn't happen. But I just honestly think, like, look at somebody like an Ian Connor, for instance. He's been accused of what he's been accused of and you can believe it, you cannot believe it. 
Um, but it's gone where it's gone to. And he's, you know, every time he puts out a tweet, you'll see people writing, you know, 32 or how many victims he allegedly has or whatnot. And it hasn't been able to go away from him. And ever since then, you know, he's not really been invited or allowed back into the, you know, to the arms of industry or whatnot because of that stain he has on his name. But Alexander Wang gets write ups on Vogue.com and stuff. He's able to do ads with, you know, certain brands or whatnot. The rules are just different. I don't know why it is like that, but the rules are different for some reason. And I just feel like, considering what we saw with Balenciaga and those BDSM bears, you would think in this world that we live in now, especially given how sensitive people are to issues concerning kids and paedophilia and abuse and all this sort of stuff and, you know, subliminal messages and whatnot, you'd think in this sort of era, if a brand did what Balenciaga did, you'd think that would be the end for them. But it wasn't. It was a momentary thing. It was a blip. They come back. They're on a fashion week. Now everything's kind of forgiven. So I just feel like for every reason, there is a pick, there's a pick and choose in terms of how much outrage goes to certain people and how much outrage goes to other people. No one's saying what Kanye didn't say, what he said was abhorrent. No one's saying that it wasn't bad. It was terrible. It was disgusting. Seeing him, seeing the guy that I kind of idolized for a long time, go on these rants and do his thing was horrendous. Seeing him burying his friends and talking disrespectfully about Virgil and stuff like, it was disgusting to see that what he was saying, what he was doing. No one stands by it. That goes without saying but let's not also let's not also try and pretend like you know um the way that he got kind of dealt with by the industry wasn't somewhat selective in terms of what how, how other people or maybe a bit more extra than other people i don't know why that is the case who knows but it is different for every reason who knows i just said maybe it's because he's black maybe because he's unlikable again i'm i'm a big Kanye fan but i also know from people that have kind of been in around his circle that he's not a very likable person to hang out with on a personal level. He's kind of hard to like, but because he's such a genius and so good at what he does, people kind of excuse that. But this is the first time he kind of felt the consequences of his kind of actions and stuff. Um, and people didn't excuse it because of his art. But he's always kind of been like this, but it was kind of behind the scenes sort of thing. So yeah, um, you know, I'm all for... I'm all for feedback and stuff, but, you know, the putting words in people's mouths and stuff and saying they said certain things is just a bit weird, personally. But hey, what do I know? <laughs>